wanted to know the story of Fitzcarraldo. It's a strange story, a little bit Sisyphus-like story, or a story of a challenge of the impossible. The title itself, I will start with that, uh, is derived from an uh, Irish name, Fitzgerald. The leading character's name is Brian Sweeney Fitzgerald, and since nobody can pronounce his name in the Amazon here, he calls himself Fitzcarraldo, and he also founds a town with the name Fitzcarraldo. There was a historical figure whose name was Carlos Fermin Fitzcarrald, a caoutchouc baron. I must say the story of this caoutchouc baron did not interest me so much. What interested in me more was one single detail, that was uh, that he crossed an isthmus from one river system into another uh, with a boat. They disassembled the boat and, and put it together again on the other river. And uh, that intrigued me to write a story about big opera in the jungle and uh, about a man who wants to bring Caruso into Iquitos and build a huge opera house. And he fails to, to get the money for it and so finally he decides to make his fortune as a rubber baron. And uh, he buys a territory which is out of reach because there are very, very strong rapids and you can't move a big boat into the upper tributary. Um, and for exploiting an area like this, you need a big boat for all the logistics and transports and so. And what he does actually is that he moves in a, uh, in a parallel tributary because he knows there's one geographical point where the two river systems almost join. There's only one or two miles in between. And with the help of uh, 1,100 savage Indians, he moves a boat across the, this mountain ridge. But it all fails because the Indians release the boat, they untie it, and it floats down streams and it crashes uh, through the rapids and everything was in vain. And still, with that defeat, uh, Fitzcarraldo is able to turn it in some kind of a victory, a very painful one. And that's basically the story of the film. I did not know exactly in which territory I would end up. Basically, we had to make a geographical decision where we had two rivers very, very near to each other with only a mountain in between, less than a mile apart. And they had to be navigable as well. So we had very, very few options. And wherever we would end up, I would try to get acquainted with the native Indians in the territory itself. In November 1979, Herzog builds a camp for cast and crew in the dense tropical rainforest close to the Ecuadorian border. The geography is perfect, but Herzog has walked into the middle of a tense situation. 25 miles from here, Peru and Ecuador are building up to a small border war. The jungle is full of soldiers and the Aguaruna Indians who have lived here for hundreds of years are touchy. To make matters worse, the Peruvian government has been encouraging settlers to move into the jungle, a process the Indians are powerless to stop without legal title to the land. Lumber and oil interests are encroaching on this part of the forest as well. The Amazon jungle is disappearing fast. Every month, 8,000 square miles are cut down. At the present rate, by the year 2010, the entire Amazon basin will be cleared. The ongoing invasion of the jungle has made the Aguaruna Indians see every stranger as a threat. But Herzog assures them that he's not moving in permanently and the local Aguarunas agree to let him shoot. Herzog needs Indians as actors and laborers, and the Aguarunas agree to that as well. Ellos, al entrar, 
nunca consideraron que las comunidades que existen tienen sus autoridades. Nunca ha respetado la organización que hay. Although Herzog has reached an agreement with the local Aguarunas, he soon finds himself tangled in a complicated power struggle. A newly formed tribal council from downriver is trying to establish political leadership for all the Indian communities in the area. The council members see Herzog's film as a perfect opportunity to cement their position. Después de filmar la película, a llevarlo a Europa, podía presentar como que los Aguarunas y Guambisas podríamos En aquel entonces, el tiempo de caucho, han sido explotados, matados, qué sé yo. Igual podría presentar la imagen allá. Entonces, esto no nos gusta eh, sobre el rechazo. Not everyone supports the Aguaruna Council. Although Herzog is only paying $3.50 a day, it's twice the going wage for Indian labor. Nelson is one of the Aguaruna leaders who think the Indians should continue working for Herzog and his producer Walter Saxer. The tribal council has put out a warrant for his arrest, charging him with treason. Death threats are being made against him and the film company. Nelson's mother is frightened. <laughs> The rumors the Aguaruna spread who were against us, uh, for example, said that we would cut, we would dig a canal between the two river systems, between Rio Maranion and further up between uh, Rio Senepa, and leave the community of Vavaima as an island which would dry out. And I spread rumors we, we would uh, slaughter them and take the grease out of their bodies and cook the grease and that we would rape their women, and that we would uh, do any kind of harm to them. There were other rumors by the press that we were smuggling arms, that we had, while we were shooting, that we destroyed their fields, but we are not shooting yet. There were rumors that uh, we had for, on our demand, four Aguaruna Indians were arrested who were in opposition against us, which is a blatant lie and it can be checked easily. Not even the Council of the Aguarunas does maintains that anymore. And then there were some uh, agitators here, even from Germany, two guys came here eight days ago, and they brought a lot of photos with, uh, from concentration camps with piles of bodies. And they had other photos with them of a, of a tribe, I don't know yet which one, and they claimed that I had, uh, it was my fault that this tribe was extinguished and wiped out. We are necessary as an enemy that can be beaten because I will not dare to attack uh, the uh, the military camps they will not dare to attack uh, the petrol companies but since we are small we we may be uh, we may be the losers <laughs> Sensing imminent danger, Herzog pulls most of his film crew out of the jungle. On December 1st, 1979, armed Indians surround the film camp and order everyone who's still there to leave. When the camp is empty, the Aguarunas burn it to the ground. The last members of Herzog's crew flee down river, flying white flags from their canoe. It takes Herzog 13 months to find a new location for the jungle camp. In January 1981, filming finally begins in Iquitos, 1,500 miles north of the new camp. Iquitos is a river port city near the headwaters of the Amazon in northern Peru, with a jet airport and a population of 200,000. 
It was originally a rubber boom town, built at the turn of the century when giant fortunes were being made overnight in the rubber business. This is the historical period in which Herzog's film story is set. The cast features Jason Robards as Fitzcarraldo, a poor, charming Irishman who's obsessed with grand opera. Fitzcarraldo is determined to build a great opera house in Iquitos, where his idol Enrico Caruso can perform. His first scheme involves trying to convince Iquitos High Society to finance the project, but to no avail. Mick Jagger plays Fitzcarraldo's sidekick, a simple-minded act. Filming begins with 40% of the picture completed. Jason Robards comes down with a bad case of amoebic dysentery. He flies home to recover, and his doctor forbids him to return to the set. For Herzog, this is an agonizing setback. He'll have to start all over with a new leading actor, and his backers are pulling out. For six weeks, Herzog puts the entire production on hold while he goes looking for another star. Then, Jagger drops out too. Commitments for a new album and a concert tour make it impossible for him to stay the extra months needed to reshoot the film from scratch. And I have decided that I would not replace his part. You can't replace him. So I think that's the biggest loss that I have had in my career as someone who makes films. When I came back to Germany and I tried to hold all the investors together, they said to me, well, how can you continue? Can you, do you have the strength or the will or the enthusiasm or so? And I said, how can you ask this question? It is, if I abandon this project, I would be a man without dreams and I don't want to live like that. I, I, I live my life or I end my life with this project. In April 1981, Herzog's new leading man, Klaus Kinski, arrives at the Iquitos airport. And the filming of Fitzcarraldo starts all over again. Fitzcarraldo lives in the Belen district of Iquitos, a collection of small houses in the shallow floodwater at the edge of the Amazon that's hardly changed in the last hundred years.
Klaus Kinski, the new Fitzcarraldo, has appeared in more than 150 films, everything from Dr. Zhivago to Herzog's Nosferatu. This will be the fourth feature he's done for Herzog. In this scene, some of the local kids are waiting for Fitzcarraldo to wake up, hoping they'll get to hear one of his precious Caruso records. This is the Narinho, a boat that was built in 1902 in Glasgow. And we found this boat in Colombia on one of the Amazon tributaries. Uh, it was used for, as a steamboat up and down the Amazon and later on it was used in the uh, war against Colombia. As a matter of fact, the peace treaty was signed on that boat here. It was very hard to move it here. As you see, there are many leaks. We had to fill the whole hull with empty petrol drums. And so we kept it afloat and we tucked it about uh, 350 miles up the river and we put it here and it should be rusty as it is. And it will be one of the leading characters in the picture that we are doing. Italian film star Claudia Cardinale plays Fitzcarraldo's lover Molly, the madam of an elegant brothel catering to the wealthiest rubber barons in Iquitos. She uses her contacts to help him buy a steamship he needs to make enough money to build the opera house. Yeah. Claudia, there's also one thing. You could easily try to open one of those doors. Yes, this one? Yeah. This no, one. not this one. This, this here is one. closed. This one is closed. So you can't do you can't do any yeah. No, no. you shouldn't open that one, but try just to this try one, to open yes. That yeah. it's That's the only one that you should not open. Okay, okay. Of course we need another boat going on the river. And for this reason, we have bought another boat, which has about the same size, the same shape of the hull, the Ua Yaga, which was built in 1906. And we rebuilt the whole boat and we repaired the engine and we'll need a third boat, a look-alike. No one knows how long it's going to take to pull a real steamship over a hill in the jungle, which is why Herzog needs three ships. While one of the ships stays in Iquitos and another goes over the hill, Herzog can keep on shooting with the third ship, including a crucial scene in the Pongo das Mortes, the Rapids of Death. The Uayaga may be destroyed in the Pongo. We'll try to save it with uh, remote control from a helicopter. I'm not 100% sure whether it will make it, but I hope because there's so much work and care and toil in it, many, many people have given their sweat and their blood of their heart. And it's really beautiful. I, I like the boats very much. Uh, very close to my heart. I would like to keep them all.
Did you sail the ship all the way up the river from Iquitos? Yes, they had to come from Iquitos all the way up here, which was quite hard. It's a very, very big distance, maybe 1,500 miles or 2,000 miles. Between Rio Urubamba and Rio uh, Camisea, we are pulling the boat now. After shooting in Iquitos, Herzog moves cast and crew 1,500 miles south to his new jungle location on the Rio Camisea. From Iquitos, under the best of circumstances, it takes a full day to reach the camp by air, with the last leg in a small single-engine plane, and over two weeks by boat when the rivers are navigable at all. Since Herzog admits he could shoot most of Fitzcarraldo right outside Iquitos, some people think the remote jungle location is just another example of his insistence on making things tough. Herzog claims that the isolated location will bring out special qualities in the actors and even the film crew that would be impossible to achieve otherwise. The local Machiganga Indians are cooperative, but Herzog's problems are far from over. The upper Amazon tributaries are too shallow for large ships to use unless they're flooded. Originally, Herzog had planned to shoot during the rainy season when the rivers would have been high enough for him to move his ships but all the delays have thrown him badly off schedule. By now, the rainy season is over and the rivers are falling fast. He has no choice. If he waits, the film will collapse. The film camp is located in the eastern foothills of the Andes. It's blazing hot in the sun, chilly when it clouds over. People sleep under blankets at night. Heavy thunderstorms can strike at any hour of the day or night, and clothing never quite dries out. Herzog provides flush toilets, cold water showers, and a noisy electric generator to power the lights, keep the beer cold, and maintain a radio link with the outside world. The only sour note comes from the radio, a loud, yammering squawk that never ceases. If you look that way, this is east, you would uh, have to walk two and a half thousand miles until the jungle ends. That way you would have to walk, let's say, two thousand miles. This way you have to walk, let's say, fifteen hundred miles. And this way you walk maybe... Yeah. Two 
Thomas, was stört dich an, den, an diesem Kautschuk? Ich, ich weder nicht. aus wie Brot oder wie Scheiße. Aber, äh, ich kann, ich kann nichts dafür, dass das... Ich kann nichts dafür, dass das... Ja, 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 How much do you think this stinking stuff weighs? 60 kilos. And I presume you're familiar with the market price. How long does it take to make one of these? Three men, one week. Presently, I have a staff of 8,500. I'm thinking of increasing it to 10. You know, you're a strange bird, but I must say, I like you. Could you give me a look over there? Yeah, with the eyes. There, yeah. yeah, yeah, this kind of, oh, okay. yeah, okay. this kind okay. of raving, yeah. Okay. Let's, okay. let's have a... Let's have a very wild one, like yeah. this here, yes. That's Can like you find a position, okay. yes? That. Yeah. yeah. That's, that is a position for the 10,000. Okay. Okay. The dream is right up at that, at that branch. Uh, okay. 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 But I'm thinking of increasing it. To act in front of a camera gives me physical pleasure. <laughs> That's when I get myself realized. Otherwise, I would be a bank manager. If, if you remove that pleasure, if you take this pleasure, then the, the, what, what have you left? The hardship of doing this film, which is a very difficult and very hard, physically hard film to do. Basically, all our equipment and all our resources would come all the way from Iquitos. The next town that you can call a town would be Pucalpa. It's half the distance between Iquitos and Camisea. And that, of course, is, a, is an enormous trouble to get even a nail into the camp or anything that you need. <laughs> I don't know exactly, the, the engine is not strong enough and we are going backwards and we'll run on ground and on these rocks and the water is sinking but if we, if we go into this we might lose this boat if that gets stuck then we can forget about shooting
With the ship run aground in the shallows, Herzog builds a mock-up with identical rigging in order to continue shooting. Through a camera lens on the top deck, it will look just like the real thing. Hay más gente. Repárteme a la gente a las canoas vacías y pásate otra vez más si hay bravos que saben nadar y remar. Fitzcarraldo has discovered a way to reach unexploited rubber trees. His plan is to pull the ship over a hill at a point in the jungle where two parallel rivers come within a mile of each other. He steams up river in search of the overland passage, but it's a terrible journey, and finally he decides to turn back. Then he sees that Indians have cut off his retreat. Despacio, despacio, despacio. Señora, adentro. Sí, sí, señora, de amarillo. Sí, señora, adentro. Señora, de amarillo, ocúltate un poquito. Las más no más se ríen. No se ríen. Señores, todas las canoas atrás que siguen. Todas las canoas atrás, atrás y vienen atrás, después. Y vienen después. Y todas, 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 todas atrás, atrás, atrás. Well, some of them come from the area where we are actually shooting Machigengas from this territory. But there are also Kampas around. But um, the big amount of Kampas came from a place, Oventini, Rio Tambo, Rio Ene, from this area. Some of them were flown here to the river and came all the way up on the river in boats. Some of them were flown in directly and some of them, the people from Oventini, whom I like best, I must say, they came on foot four days over the mountains to the river and then they were picked up and driven to the camp. No action, no action. No, we're have an I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here, very satisfied. We are waiting in the moment, waiting for some Indians more and waiting for some canoes more. And when we have some canoes more, we are waiting for some Indians more and more. That's our problem in the moment. And in one hour, it's too late. In one hour, it's, it's absolutely too late. It takes several days to film the scene, especially since Herzog insists on shooting during what's known as the magic hour at the end of the day as the sun sets and the light turns warm and golden. Timing is crucial and Herzog spends most of the two days waiting for the light. 20 arrows against the zoom, huh? I fear the langweil sich mehr and mehr and schließen plötzlich. Weißt du, guck mal den großen Dicken da mit dem komischen Objektiv. Meinst du, du triffst den? Also ich treff den, also du triffst den doch nicht. Du wackelst ja, Mensch. Aber ich treffe den. Komm, nimm die Kamera jetzt und dreh das. Nein, es ist zu dunkel. Komm, das geht doch noch. Ach, das geht doch noch. Das geht doch noch. Das geht doch noch. Es ist knapp, Lente 2 hier und innen ist gar nichts mehr. Oh, David, que quedan las canoas aquí. Oh, el herpito se falleo. A la tierra. Ja, 
in this case, we will probably have one of the last feature films with authentic natives in it. They are fading away very quickly. And it's a, a catastrophe and a tragedy that's going on. And we are losing riches and riches and riches. And we lose uh, cultures and individualities and languages and mythologies. And we'll be stark naked at the end. We'll end up like all the cities in the world now with uh, skyscrapers and, and a universal kind of culture like, like the American culture. I don't feel like doing a documentary on, on the Kampas and it, uh, it should not end up as an ethnographic film. I also stylize them and I have them in the film as they probably are not precisely in their, in their normal life. They do things that they normally would not do. They act in that film and that interests me even more. Yet they have an authenticity of their culture and their behavior, their movements, their language in it that uh, will just uh, disappear from the face of this earth. I don't want to live in a, in a world where there are no lions anymore or where there are no people like Well, these people are uh, watchmen for the night because we have uh, had an incident with a man who was attacked by arrows. That means there were three people, his wife, the man, and another young man. And further up that river, you can see here, and only two hours by speedboat from here, this attack occurred and the man was hit with an arrow through the throat. and on the leg and his wife was was hit three times. I have not seen her yet, but she, apparently here in the hip and a little higher. And that was in complete darkness. And they were lucky that they had a, a doctor here and a very good paramedic who uh, operated them immediately. We'll do a raid upstreams now and I hope they don't make any contact because if they make contact and if something is going on there, we will probably have a raid of the Amewakas down here. And it's all because the river is so unusually low. You can see all these riverbanks. Sometimes the water went all the way up to that camp about six, seven yards higher, about 20 feet higher or so. And now uh, turtles come to the sandbanks and lay their eggs. Uh, and the Amewakas come very, very far down to dig for turtle eggs. And that's why this clash came. But they have also asked for the assistance of some of the Kampas, which is very unusual because uh, Machigengas here in this area were afraid of the Kampas. There's always a feeling of terror when you speak about the campus of Gran Pajonal. I can't stop them here. It would be impossible. I would interfere in their... How do I say? In, in their habits or in their space of living if I kept them back and if I let them go as it has happened, I couldn't stop them anyway. 
there might be a, a more serious incident and it will be all on my shoulders. I can foresee, I can foresee a lot of trouble. And we have had enough, we have had enough trouble. I, I'm, run, I'm running out of fantasy. I don't know what else can happen now. While the raiding party is away, Herzog films the traditional game of arrow catching, but he fails to get what he wants because the best arrow catchers are upriver with the raiding party. <laughs> Those are the arrows the doctor gave me. Uh, this one struck the woman here. It's more or less intact. Here, they are very heavy. And this point here is damaged because it hit her here in the hip. And the arrowhead broke. And here it cracked open a little bit on impact. And that's the arrow. This is the arrow that hit the man through the throat. Here that came loose. It's very big feathers, I think. It's uh, vulture feathers. And uh, the arrowhead, it is very sharp and very, very well pointed. And there's still some blood on it. So there, there are some gruesome weapons. You're going to keep the arrows? Well, yeah, maybe for my little son. He will be excited to know that this went through a man, but I don't know. A week later, the raiding party returns. They have made a successful show of strength without bloodshed. Life in the camp returns to normal. This scene is the first real contact between Fitzcarraldo and the natives. Afterwards, the Indians agree to pull Fitzcarraldo's ship over the hill. In Herzog's screenplay, they think he's some kind of white god, a kindred spirit who believes, as Herzog puts it, that everyday life is only an illusion 
behind which lies the reality of dreams. X99E1. Why did you decide to have two, you know, clearly marked off separate camps between the, the cast and the Indians? Yeah, there was um, there was long discussion about that, how we should handle it, and my feeling was that we should not involve them in the kind of problems that we had here, in our kind of organization, our technical things. Um, besides, I did not want to have them too much contaminated in uh, how do you say? In parentheses, yeah, yeah, in quotes, uh, by Western culture, they should be among themselves, and they, they, for example, wouldn't like our food, and it would have caused problems, and we didn't probably expect to eat their kind of food. So um, these two camps mark a very clear distinction that I never try to conceal that there is a highly technical group of people here from a different continent with a different history behind them and another group of native Indians who basically is living here in this environment has its own way of life, its culture. All through the upper Amazon, Indians drink masato, an alcoholic beverage made from a vegetable called yuca. It's an important food source, making up a large part of the Indian's diet. It's also an essential part of almost every activity from morning till night.
Silencio, por favor. Silencio. Silencio! No, kann man so nehmen. Ja, ja, los. Sound. What? 110 C1. Okay. Trabajo, 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 trabajo. Masato is also a ceremonial liquor that seals every important agreement. Fitzcarraldo has been invited to join his new comrades in a ritual toast, but Kinski is terrified of infection. The thought of drinking something that someone spit into is unbearable. After scrubbing out the bowl with bottled water, he pours in canned milk to substitute for the dreaded Masato. Es yuca, con saliva fermentada. Vamos, bebe. My God. The Indians agree to make a few bows and arrows for Kinski. They accept his payment of $3.50 an arrow, the equivalent of a full day's wage. To the Indians, who can make 20 arrows in a day, this probably seems like an extreme overpayment, until they have to pay the same $3.50 for a single Polaroid photo taken by one of the Peruvian workers. <laughs> They earn about twice as much here as they would earn when they work in the field somewhere. In, on the Bio Tambo or, or somewhere else. The tractor driver earns a, a good average wage for a tractor driver here, but it is no comparison between uh, the level of salaries that we have to pay to actors and technicians here from Europe or United States and those people here. And I think many, many, many of the things should not be counted and calculated in, in terms of money. What is much more important for the natives here is that this land here, which has no land title yet, will belong to them after we have finished that film. And um, to struggle for them, uh, for the land title, for, for this whole territory, that no settlers or no oil companies or no lumber people can exploit it and take it away from them, that, that is something decisive. Because Herzog wants to avoid repeating the situation with the Aguarunas, he's made a different deal this time. He's promised the Machiganga Indians on whose territory he's shooting to help them get legal title to their land. Listo! Much deeper than we thought. It's to level the ground. There's a ram bin up there. You have to make a cut through to the top. That'll take months. Dynamite. I thought we have enough dynamite. Oh, oh, Senores. A path has been cut through the jungle for the ship, up a steep hill from the Camisea, across a mile of dense muddy forest, and down the other side to the Urubamba. 
atrás. Usted tiene que, que tomar ramas y echar al, al lado y cortando con bastante. ¿Puedes explicar a ellos? Que no se vayan rápido, pero que trabajen fuerte. Estos que me echan al lado, estos ramas ya. Basically, it is what I have been looking for. The day, it went well, but I don't know, I hated the, the day, I don't know why. I have no reason to hate it, but I, I didn't like that mud up there. Sometimes I wish to sit in an easy chair and with a cup of tea next to me. The bulldozer cutting the path through the jungle uses 150 gallons of fuel a day. Fuel that has to be flown in by light plane and ferried up the river in dugout canoes. The bulldozer is designed for tough work, but Herzog bought it used and it breaks down constantly. Spare parts have to be flown in all the way from Miami via Iquitos and sometimes they're not even the right parts. <laughs> With the topsoil bulldozed away, heavy rain turns the clay into deep, slippery muck. Even when the bulldozer is working, it spends hours every day sliding helplessly in the mud. Despite Herzog's high technology, the jungle is winning. Most of the Indians signed on for three months, but because of shooting delays, some have stayed six months. The Indian camp wasn't designed for such long occupancy. Sanitation, medical, and food supply systems are breaking down. Nor are the Indians used to living in large groups. Social relations are tense. <laughs> Sí, 
Father Mariano Gagnon, a Franciscan missionary, comes to look into the welfare of the Indians from his mission. The Indians are bored, morale is low, and some of the latest arrivals have had to leave their wives and families behind. On top of everything else, the only soccer ball in camp has a hole in it. No podemos resolver el problema que son reunidos en, en un espacio tan angosto. Número dos, no podemos resolver el, las mujeres que no se encuentran de ellos, todas las, sus familias. Podemos resolver de todas maneras uh, la medicina, higiena, masato, hay que avisar al, al resto de la gente. El fútbol es, es bien el serio. por el masato que van a tener, yeah. ¿quién les va a hacer el masato? Porque las mujeres se casan el masato. Si ellos no tienen su mujer, yeah. entonces no pueden tener masato. Ese es yeah. el problema, ¿no? Y otra mujer de otro grupo no les va a hacer masato. Es, es comprometerse, yeah. o sea, dentro de su cultura, pues no... Son cosas que no, no se hacen, o sea, es, sí. es, un, es un problema, ¿no? Yeah. There's nothing really serious, it's just little things. But I'm sure there's a lot of them could be straightened out. The film crew is just as bored as the Indians. A series of bulldozer breakdowns and heavy rains have slowed filming to a crawl. People amuse themselves as best they can, but below the surface, anxiety and frustration are high. If we would work from the morning till the evening, yeah. it's fine. It's fine. You you have to do something. You have to move. You know. But now we're just sitting and sitting and sitting around. So you can't go anywhere. You can't go. You can't escape of this fucking stinking camp because you never know when they call you. Because you have to be here. Because you're paid for. You're on the contract. So you can't just go. It means you are completely captured here. Completely. You go from there to there and from there to there. That's so all what you can do. So, of course, it's uh, at least you have this view. A state of, state of something else. And f you feel you're right in the jungle, which is a good feeling. You know. <laughs> I agreed to have them here because even the Dominican Padre here advised me very strongly to have them here. Because as you know, in the neighborhood we do have two uh, native villages, Machigenga villages, Shivankorene and Kamisea. And if after months and months of having these people here in the, in the camp, all the workers, mestizos and white people, uh, they might go after the women down in the, in the villages and that would, would really cause problems. So even the Catholic priest has advised us to have some, some ladies here. Sí, dos hijos. Uno tiene ocho meses, otro tiene tres años. No, por necesidad. No, no es porque me gustaba. Uh -huh. Porque okay. si sería para que me gustaba, no, sería en, a encontrarme un hombre y me paso mi tiempo, que mi necesidad que yo tengo, si es por, por el gusto que yo quiero, ¿no? Sí. Uh -huh. No, no es eso. Por necesidad le hago eso. When you would ask me uh, to have a prostitute in my... Uh, on my shooting location in the United States or in Germany, it would be ridiculous. But here, uh, it is standard expectation and standard behavior, and somehow the, I don't know, the, the jungle sweats it out. It's not even ob obscene. It is uh, probably some fertility or whatever that's going on here in the jungle.
Esteban, cuídate cuando cho chocamos, que no te caigas. Well, the boat that Fitzcarraldo actually pulled across was only 30 tons. Yes. And and how big is your boat? Besides, they uh, disassembled it in about 14 or 15 parts and carried these parts individually across the mountain. And... Nosotros no somos de acuerdo. Y yo he dicho, quiero correr un riesgo un poco más grande que usted avisa. Laplace Martins, a Brazilian engineer, has worked out a complicated system to pull Herzog's ship over the hill with cables, pulleys, and the bulldozer. But the system is designed for a 20 degree slope. Herzog insists on 40 degrees. The system has already failed once. Martins is afraid people will die if it tears apart again. Aqui nesse bulinete grande onde vai trabalhar, vai trabalhar 60 homens mais ou menos. É um dos maiores lugares onde pode haver o risco do trator vir das talhas. Quando se de repente por uma infelicidade romper um cabo desse, isso pode vir para cá. E se o navio tiver a tendência de baixar, então ele arrasta tudo que tem aqui, todos esses materiais são arrastados, são trazidos. Se realmente tiver gente aqui, ou se por uma felicidade eles não puderem saltar para cá, ou pularem de aqui para cá, que é o lugar mais baixo, essa parte é mais baixa, eles poderão correr o risco de se baterem. Porque os que estão aqui, este pode bater este, este bate este, este bate este, este bate outro. Compreendeu? Então seria uma catástrofe tremenda. <risos> Con toda seguridad, quédanse todos aquí. Déjenme ver, es, es seguro este. Necesitamos una persona muy responsable siempre a este tronco para avisar problemas y parar el trabajo en el momento que hay señales que no aguanta este tronco. Si no aguanta este tronco, pierden la vida cuatro, cinco, seis personas. Mucho más. O más. Más. Ich meine, es gibt mehr als fünf Tote dann. Cuando se Nein. encuentran 60 personas, sí, cuando... Personas, puede todos volar, ¿no? como un, un cohete. Die fliegen wie Raketen weg, sagt er. Wenn das Ding rausschmeißt, ja. Dann gibt es 20, 30 Tote. Martins quits. Herzog decides to continue without him. Aquí hay una posibilidad de 30%. 30% de posibilidad de ellos hacer eso. Então, 70% pode ser uma catástrofe? Pode ser uma catástrofe, mas não um qualquer um. O que pensam de trazer um barco sobre uma montanha? O que pensam disso? De que não se vai poder subir, porque não é chico. Se houver só um pequeno, chiquito, esse ele pode subir rápido, como é tremendo. De repente los cables se arrancan y nos matan. Además tiene tres pisos. ¿Quién va a poder empujarles? Tremendo barco. Si es hasta una cana o no pueden jalarlo. ¿Ustedes tienen miedo que les va a pasar algo? Tienen miedo de perder su vida. No tiene miedo de perder su vida. Si nosotros vamos a estar empujando el barco y el dueño del barco debe estar ahí detrás del barco también. Si es que nosotros morimos, él también muere, pues, el dueño. No, no, nosotros no vamos a morir solo y el dueño no va a morir. No sé, aquí falta gente.
Feared has happened. A massive metal coupling has snapped in half, and the ship slides back to where it started. Uh -huh. <laughs> Herzog is stranded in the jungle with a 300-ton steamship that won't move, and time is running out. He needs money to move the ship, but no one will invest unless the ship moves first. Behind his back, some of the actors are talking about getting out while the getting is good. Only a few of the cast, crew, and Indians believe in his dream anymore. Even Herzog is beginning. It's an unfinished country. It's still prehistorical. The only thing that is lacking is, is the dinosaurs here. It's like a curse weighing on an entire landscape. And whoever goes too deep into this has his share of that curse. So we are cursed with what we are doing here. It's a land that God, if he exists, has, has created in anger. It's the only land where, where creation is unfinished yet. Taking a close look at, at what's around us, there, there is some sort of a harmony. It is the harmony of overwhelming and collective murder. And we, in comparison to the articulate vileness and baseness and obscenity of all this jungle, uh, we, in comparison to that enormous articulation, we only sound and look like badly pronounced and half-finished sentences out of a stupid suburban novel, a cheap novel. And we have to become humble in front of this overwhelming misery and overwhelming fornication, and overwhelming growth and overwhelming lack of order. Even the, the stars up here in the, in the sky look like a mess. There is no harmony in the universe. We have to get acquainted to this idea that there is no real harmony as we have conceived it. Once again, Herzog pushes on in the face of disaster. Leaving a small crew to work on moving the ship up the hill, Herzog takes the second look-alike steamship a full day's journey downriver to the Pongo de Manique, the most dangerous rapids in Peru. In the film, after the Indians pull the ship over the hill, there's a giant drunken party, and Fitzcarraldo passes out in his cabin. While he sleeps, the Indians release the ship. They have a dream of their own, in which they sacrifice the ship to the river gods. Fitzcarraldo stumbles on deck to find himself crashing through the rapids. His dream is shattered.
Ja, Klaus, komm! Die Action! Schau doch! Die Action! Da schmeckt ja, ja, der den Thomas nach innen. Ja, na gut, wir haben nur jetzt jemanden da. Ob das jetzt zwei oder drei Minuten ist, nicht nur drei, Klaus. Nicht Hast du dir nichts, äh, nichts kaputt gemacht? Der Leans auf, oh Mann, der Schläfe. Und hier, das glaubt mir. Du das hast mal am besten Blut, und ich mit einem Dreck verbannt. Ja, das Verband. saugt ja. ja. Gut, aber du musst den, du musst den. Schade, Klaus. Schade, Klaus, dass du weggerannt bist, bevor das aufgeprallt ist. Before Herzog can get the ship back to camp, it runs aground on a sandbank. He can't film the final scenes in Iquitos without the ship, so he has to wait for the rainy season to flood the river and lift it off the sand. But as month follows month, in the longest dry season in recorded history, the ship remains stuck. The other ship is stuck too, at the bottom of the hill. In fact, the whole film is stuck. If I believed in the devil, I would say the devil was right here and is still right here. It becomes very questionable because uh, people have lost their lives. People have been in a plane crash and five of them in critical condition, one of them paralyzed. And those are all the costs that you have to pay. It could have hit me or anyone. And one starts to question the, the profession itself. What, what are your plans when this movie is all over? What are you going to be doing? I shouldn't make movies anymore should go to a lunatic asylum <laughs> right away. But I don't know, it's... Uh, very much of it is, is too crazy and too... Uh, just not, not what a man should do in his life all the time. And I feel... Uh, what if, even if I get that boat over the mountain and somehow I finish that film, anyone can congratulate me and talk me into finding it marvelous. I, nobody on this earth will convince me to be happy about all that. Not, not until the end of my days. Herzog's film ends with Fitzcarraldo achieving a victory of sorts. He sells his battered steamship and makes just enough money to bring a small-time opera troupe to Iquitos for a single performance. In the end, Herzog won a painful victory of his own. After months of work, using heavier equipment and a new engineering crew from Lima, he pulled the ship to the top of the hill, and in November 1981, almost four years after pre-production began, the last shot of Fitzcarraldo was completed. It's not only my dreams. My belief is that it's my duty, because this uh, might be the, the inner chronicle of what we are, and we have to articulate ourselves, otherwise we would be cows in